in shape spiritually if you only work out on Sunday. These are your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Pastor Gregory C. Trotter and the Body of Friendship Baptist Church. Thank you and have a spiritually renewed day. Good morning, friendship. Good morning, friendship. I give honor and praise to my Savior, Jesus Christ, to the shepherd of this sheepfold, Pastor Gregory C. Trotter, to First Lady, Sister Doris Trotter, and to the ministers and deacons here at Friendship. My name is Sheila Finn, and I'm here to invite all of the ladies to our annual women's conference on next weekend. Our theme for this year is Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, Jewels for Jesus. On Friday, November the 17th, starting at 7 p.m., we will have a night of praise. On Saturday the 18th, Continental Breakfast starts at 7.30 a.m., and the conference does begin at 8.30 a.m. Our youth facilitators for this year are Dr. Bethany Thomas, and her topic is Shine Bright Like a Diamond. Also, Sister Suneda Daly, and her topic is Understanding Your True Beauty, Value, and Self-Worth. Our adult facilitators are Sister Sylvia Bethea, and her topic is Receiving the Seed, Be the Gem You Wish to See, and also Sister Tammy Nash. She'll be speaking on Becoming a Woman of Impact, a Spiritual Rock. At 11 a.m., our brunch will begin, and right immediately following, we'll have our keynote address from Evangelist Gwen Wayne from Little Rock, Arkansas. We ask that you register online, or again, you can register at the table. Registration for adults is $30, and for ages 10 to 17, it's $10. Nine and under are free. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to seeing you next weekend at the Women's Conference.
Good morning. Good morning. Giving all praise, honor, and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ, to Pastor Trotter and other ministers on the roster, and to all the members and friends of Friendship. My name is Deacon Vince Darius, and I'm here to welcome our guests. If you're not currently a member of Friendship, please stand and remain standing, please. On behalf of Pastor Trotter and the Hospitality Committee, I welcome you to Friendship. We understand you had a choice this morning as to what church you would worship with, and we truly feel honored and blessed that you chose Friendship. If there's anything we can do to make your stay with us more enjoyable and spirit-filled, please don't hesitate to ask. Friendship family, please stand and acknowledge our guests. First, giving reverence to God, Pastor Trotter, all the ministers, and all you guests and visitors that, that came out to the house of worship. Um, I'm Deacon Bethia, and I am honored to stand before you to introduce to you the veterans of this congregation that serve. So if you're a veteran, please stand. Let's give them a hand. So that's phase one. Phase two is we have a video. And for those of you that submitted your photos, um, thank you. For those that came in a little late, we'll see you next year. But um, <laughs> there weren't that many this year. Um, some of you guys, um, you know, listened and some kind of didn't. But um, it's not that we try to slice you. So I apologize if your picture is not going to be presented. But see me after service and I'll make sure that uh, it'll, it'll show up next year. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you the video that was presented for the veterans of Friendship Baptist Church of the Colony. We're going to start it from the beginning because I think there was some, some audio that's supposed to come with that. So give him a second. Okay, as they're getting it geared up, um, you know, one thing about, about friendship is we recognize the importance of the service that our veterans had for this country. We recognize that on, to, on yesterday there was a lot of restaurants that were offering free meals and stuff, and I missed mine, so hopefully some veterans got theirs. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's sad that that's the only day that the, the country is willing to give out something for a veteran. So on Facebook, um, I put out a, a challenge. If you see a veteran, you see them in a restaurant, pay for their meal. If you see a, re a veteran today, pay for their meal. You ain't got to, you don't have to say, hey, my name is Billy Bob. Just pay for the meal silently and go on about your business. Because sometimes when you do things that way, you, you're blessed more so than to always say your name when you give something. 
So at this time, I think I filled in the gap. Here we go. It's worth it. It's worth the wait. There we go. They are our sons and brothers, daughters and sisters, mothers and fathers, grandparents, neighbors, and friends. They live their lives protecting us in a thousand different ways in places spanning the globe. Watching, waiting, ready to serve at a moment's notice to give what was asked of them. We take this time to express our gratitude and love to those who serve, for those who received a Purple Heart or Medal of Honor and Valor, for those who received their pilot wings and wore their medals with pride, for those who swore a sacred oath to protect us from harm and danger. We honor all of them because they fought for us so that we could stand secure in the United States of America, the land of the free. The words sacrifice, honor, commitment, integrity, bravery, and courage are just a few words to describe our veterans. Friendship Baptist Church of the Colony, we remember and honor those who serve. Melvin Adams, United States Army. Daryl Alford, United States Air Force. Chris Allen, United States Marines. Dante Anderson, United States Air Force. Christopher Aries, United States Air Force. Hurley Blackman Jr., United States Army. Eddie Brady Jr., United States Army. Robert Branch, United States Army. Honore Britton, United States Navy. Felicia Lee Bryant, United States Navy. Sean Kevin Carr, United States Marines. Dana Carroll, United States Navy. Carol Carter, Air National Guard. Perry Lee Carter, United States Army. James Chapman, United States Army. Athena Close, United States Navy. Willie Conyer, United States Army. Bruce Cotton, United States Navy. Stanley Crawford, United States Air Force. Henry Crawley, United States Army. Martinez Coberson, United States Navy. Bruce Davis Sr., United States Army. Charlie Davis, United States Army. Homer Delf, United States Army. Terry Easley Jr., United States Army. Reginald Edwards, United States Air Force. Quartetta Raymond Lee Field Sr., United States Army. John Gibson, United States Army. D.C. Govier, United States Air Force. Emmett Green, United States Air Force. Jay Hardy, United States Army. Anthony Harkless, United States Army. Calvin R. Harper, United States Army. Michael Hawkins, United States Air Force. Rome Hernandez, United States Army. Tyrone Hill, United States Navy. Carla Norris Hopkins, United States Navy. Horace Irvin Jr., United States Army. Ed Johnson, United States Army. J. 
Jack Johnson, United States Army. Antoinette Jones, United States Army. Jalen Troy Lacey, United States Army. Kazar Lagron, United States Army. Mark Malone Sr., United States Army. Joseph Maribel, United States Army. Franklin Mason, United States Army. Dr. Philip Masterson, United States Army. Derek L. Mims, United States Army. Aliska Mitchell, United States Army. Dominic Nettles, United States Army. Laquana Nesbitt, United States Army. Billy Newsom, United States Army. Dwayne Packer, United States Army. Anthony Parker, United States Air Force. Eddie Porter, United States Air Force. Preston Rich, United States Air Force. Lisa Richardson, United States Air Force. Raul Rios Jr., United States Navy. Joel Saab, United States Army. Mary Shelby, United States Army. Robert Shelby, United States Marines. Melissa Singleton, United States Air Force. Dorothy F. Smith, United States Army. Henry Sparks Jr., United States Air Force. Edward Stewart, United States Army. Alfonso Thornton, United States Navy. Kendra Vaglienti, United States Army. Anthony Walker, United States Air Force. Ariana Wilson, United States Navy. Minister of Music, Kevin O. Davis, United States Army. Honoring our deacons and deaconess. Deaconess Sharice Duffy, United States Navy. Deacon Lynn Armour, United States Army. Deacon Kevin Bathia, United States Army. Deacon Archie Bostic, United States Air Force. Deacon Peter Burns, United States Army. Deacon Vincent Berries, United States Navy. Deacon Lamar Jordan, United States Air Force. Deacon Ronald Scroggins, United States Army. Deacon Hollis Wilkins, United States Army. And now, honoring our ministers. Minister Dedrick Adele, United States Marines. Minister Stacy Duffy, United States Navy. Minister Michael Green, United States Air Force. Minister Mario McManus, United States Marines. Minister Frank Peterson, United States Army. Minister Solomon Stewart, United States Army. Minister Terrence Thurman, United States Army. Youth Minister Kenneth Williams, United States Army. Minister Willard White, United States Army. Senior Assistant Pastor James Jenkins Sr., United States Navy. And our very own Senior Pastor Gregory C. Trotter, United States Navy. All right, Let me take this opportunity to thank you personally for your faithful service to our country. To each veteran, I salute you and I say thank you for your faithful service. May God bless you and may God keep you.
This is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice. Amen. We say good morning to each and every one of you as we thank God for being in his house of worship one more time. Amen. Amen. To all of our veterans, we say thank you for your service to our country. And we thank God for keeping you and bringing you back home safely. Amen. 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 To our guests this morning, we say welcome to Friendship. We thank God for your being here. Please come back and worship with us again. Those who are joining us by live streaming, we welcome you into this worship service as well. Amen. Amen. Again, we say happy Veterans Day. And because of Veterans Day on tomorrow, uh, all of the church offices will be closed. Amen. So no activities here uh, at the church on tomorrow. Also, uh, for those of you who might be in need of a uh, Thanksgiving basket, or those of you who know that someone that's a member of Friendship that might be in need of a Thanksgiving basket, are we ready to move outside of Friendship? Or if you know your neighbor or somebody that's in need, notice I keep using the word need. Yes, sir. Amen. Not in want, but in need. Amen. There's a difference. Amen. Amen. If you know someone who will not be able otherwise to have a Thanksgiving dinner, please see one of our deacons. Fill out one of the forms. The cutoff is this coming Thursday, November the 16th, and the baskets will be distributed on next Tuesday evening. Amen. Amen. Also, you heard the announcement concerning our Thanksgiving fellowship with First Baptist that will be coming up next Sunday. Uh, we're inviting all of you to go and share with us as we worship with them at 6 o'clock. Uh, that means we need our ushers, we need our choir, and we need our membership. Amen. As I have been asked to uh, bring the message that evening. Amen. Also, you heard the announcement concerning the women's conference that's coming up this Friday and Saturday. So we're inviting all of the ladies of friendship to please come out and be a part of this women's conference. Even if you can't afford uh, the $30, come on anyway. We'll figure out a way to get it done. Amen? Amen. So for those of you who want to do it online, you can register online, or you may go out to the table at the end of uh, worship service in the Family Life Center. Uh, also, we want to remind you that our church clerk position is still open for another few days. If you're interested, uh, there should be some information uh, on the hospitality table right outside of the sanctuary. Amen. Also, the BGC, the Baptist General Convention of Texas, our annual meeting starts this evening uh, down in Waco, Texas, and continues on tomorrow. And then on Tuesday, for those of you who might be interested in going, uh, please see me, and I'll be more than happy to uh, give you what you need to be able to go. Please continue to pray for Deacon Willie Adams. Amen. His dad passed away, and he'll be funeralized on tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Uh, also, Sister Shirley Lee's daughter, uh, the memorial service was held, was held for her on this past Friday. Uh, also, br uh, Brother Michael Moore, who sings in our choir, his grandfather passed away, and the service was this past Friday. So please keep them in your prayers. I want to say happy birthday to Sister Margie Holmes, 80 years old today. Amen. So we say to you, Sister Holmes, happy birthday. Amen. Also to Brother Jimmy Lee Carter. Uh, celebrated, uh, was celebrated his 79th birthday. Right. Amen. So we say happy birthday to him as well. Amen. We serve an awesome and an almighty God. Amen. And we thank God for our being here today, and we thank God for each and every one of you. Let's pray one for the other. Amen. Yeah, I did see Deacon Lewis. Amen. Had surgery, and he's back today. Amen. So it's so good to see you. Amen. God is a healer. Amen. He's a lot of things, but he's a healer. I thank God that he's our healer. Amen. All right, our deacons are going to come at this time. 
we continue to worship God with our giving. Uh, here at Friendship, we believe in tithe and offering. Tithe is what we owe God. The offering is the seed that we sow. And this is that opportunity where we give back to God that which so rightfully belong to Him. Here at Friendship, we have several ways to give. We have online giving. We also uh, have a tithing envelope that's right there in front of you if you want to use the tithing envelope. We also have text to give and barcode giving. So if you would look on the back of your program all the way down at the bottom, if you're interested in either text to give, there's a number there or the barcode, it's on the back of your program. But whatever you do, make sure you give back to God that which so rightfully belong to Him. Amen. Amen. Our deacons are going to pray. And then you are in the hands of our ushers. Father God, <clears throat> Father God, once again, we just come to you to say thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence once again in this place, Father. Thank you for your just your loving hand, your comfort and caring for each and every one of us. As we prepare to give offering this morning, Father, we just thank you for allowing to give back a portion of what you have blessed us with, Father. Bless those who have it to give and those who have the desire but cannot, Father. And we will be careful to use this for the uplifting of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. to our altar prayer. We ask if you desire to come to the altar that you would do so at this time. Know that God has the power. The question is, do we have the faith? So as we make ourselves to the altar, I'm going to ask the Reverend Johnson would come and lead us in a word of prayer. Amen, amen. You know, as we come to the altar, God always has something for us. Our Heavenly Father, oh Lord God, once again we stand in your household of faith, dear Lord. 
Father God, first and foremost, come asking you surely for forgiveness of the sins that we've committed now, dear Lord. Oh, Father God, asking you to let your, your Holy Ghost reign in this house of the Lord, Father. Lord God, show your mighty hand now, dear Father. Lord, because someone comes in to your house in need of you, dear Lord. Father, they need to turn to you for everything that they need, dear Lord. Father God, they need to stop depending on another, dear Lord, and depend on you, dear Father. Lord, if we took you everywhere we go, we would be all right, dear Lord. Lord, if we took you to the job, dear Father, we would be all right, Lord. If we took you before we took up our cell phones, we would be all right, dear Lord. Lord God, if we just look to you, dear Father, so when the sickness come, Father, the first thing we do is look unto the name of Jesus, dear Lord. Father God, when death come into our house, household we should look to you dear lord father god when nothing is going right in our lives we should look to you dear lord father when it's preaching time we should look to you dear father for the man that will come and stand in john's shoes dear lord father god every time we wake up dear father we should look to you and praise your holy name dear lord and tell you thank you for waking us up dear lord father when we on the dangerous highways and byways dear lord we should look to you dear lord father because all of our help comes from you dear lord father someone is worried about a light bill today dear Lord but father God we should look to you dear Lord father God somebody is just worried that something is not going right in their household dear father marriage is the breaking up dear Lord but father God we should look to you dear Lord father God because you are all that we have dear Lord while father once we let go of you we have nothing dear Lord father God we need you every minute every second there there every hour of our lives dear Lord father is just something about you in the name of Jesus Jesus, that Father, that brings us and Father, and just makes us feel just so comfortable, dear Lord. Father God, the air that you let us breathe this morning, we ought to thank you for it, dear Lord. Father God, we know that you are God and God all by yourself, dear Lord. So, Lord God, we ask that you move through this congregation this morning, dear Lord. Father, let us know, dear Father, that all we have is you, dear Lord. When mother don't answer the phone, Lord, we got you. When grandmother don't answer the phone, we got you. Lord, when it just seems like it just ain't working out, we got you, dear Lord. So, Father God, help us to look to you, dear Lord. And, Father God, once we've done all that we can do, we still want to look to you, dear Father, and praise your holy name. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, and thank you, Lord. From the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 28. It's about the fifth book in the Bible. <laughs> Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. I promise you, you'll run right into Deuteronomy. Amen. Chapter number 28, and we'll read verses 12 and 13. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. May the Lord bless the reader, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for another Sunday morning, another Lord's Day, 
Another blessed privilege to be in your house of worship one more time. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. And we thank you, Lord, for your manifested presence in this place. Now, Lord, we just ask that you would have your way as we stand behind this sacred desk to share just a word of encouragement to your people today. We just pray that you would use us for your glory. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we give him glory, honor, and praise who is the head of our lives. And we thank God for Jesus Christ who is my Savior, the Holy Spirit, who indwells me. And he's my comforter, keeper, and my guide. And to our ministers and deacons and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. God's will for our lives is in his word. That's what we're going to talk about today. God's will for our lives is in his word. The quote today that you've seen on the screen said that you're not doing very much exercise if you only come to church on Sunday. Well, let me say this, if the only time you pick up your Bible is on Sunday, you're not going to know God's will for your life. Amen. One of the most asked questions and most sought after answers in Christianity today is that, uh, what is God's will for my life? What has God called? Uh, what does he want me to do? Some people spend their entire Christian life trying to figure this out. They read all kinds of books, attend all kinds of seminars, when all they need to do is to read the book, the Bible. You see, God's will for our lives God's plan for our lives, they are spelled out in his holy word. You see, as we begin to walk the Christian journey, you see, God begins to reveal specific things to us. But we find his will written out plainly in his word. But, but it's only when we spend time reading and studying his word that we began to understand God's will for our lives. Let me, let me share with somebody, let me help somebody, amen. The very first thing that uh, helps us to understand God's will for our lives is to become obedient with what we already know. Hello, somebody. Amen. We, we, we must obey what we already know. Amen. Amen. We talk about God is good. We, we talk about all that he's doing, but, but what are you doing for him? Amen. What are you doing for Christianity? You see, we want God to do, we, this is a one-sided thing. You see, sometimes all we want is God to do some stuff for us. Can I get a witness? You see, when we come to the altar for altar prayer, most of the time it's to tell God what we need. Or rather, what we want. But, but have you ever come to the altar to just say, Lord, I thank you? You see, sometimes we ought to get on our knees without asking anything and, and just spend a little time telling God, thank you. Lord, I thank you for keeping me when I laid down last night. I thank you for blessing me to wake up this morning. I thank you for starting me on my way. We teach our children how to say thank you when somebody does something. But how often do we tell God thank you for what he's doing in our life? Now in this 28th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, where we find our text, God has brought the nation of Israel through 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. 
And they wonder they're all because of disobedience. They, at this point, are forced to enter the promised land. Moses, who is the writer of this book of Deuteronomy, writes his final instruction. Or if you will, he gives his farewell address to the nation of Israel as they are now about to enter the promised land. In this book of Deuteronomy, he recounts their history. But he also tells them of their future if they obey or disobey God. That's what we just finished reading. Now Moses himself would not be able to enter the promised land because of his own disobedience. Can I get a witness? I don't know about you, but I thank God for grace and mercy. Amen, amen. You see, God would not allow Moses to enter the promised land because Moses allowed people to get him upset. Amen. And when God said to Moses, speak to the rock, Moses hit the rock. And it caused him to miss a place in the promised land. Amen. But, but, but God is still gracious and merciful unto Moses. He allowed Moses to see it, but he couldn't have it. Amen. That's tough when you see what belongs to you. Uh, when you see what God had for you, but, 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 but because of something you did, amen, you can't have what God promised you. Such was the case with Moses. So Moses, in this 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, tells Israel of the blessing that await them if they obey God. But he also warns them of the consequences they would face if they or when they disobeyed God. In other words, Moses laid out the plan and the will of God for his people. It was written right there in his word. You see, God's plan was to bless and prosper Israel. But their blessing was tied to obedience. You see, his will was that they would be a holy people and an example to all the other nations yes, who served idol gods. But again, their blessings hinged upon their obedience. You see, as Christians, God's plan for our lives have not changed. Can I get a witness? You see, his plan is still to prosper and bless us, to make us lenders and not borrowers, to make us the head and not the tail. You see, that still hadn't changed. Amen. God still desires that for you and I. Amen. But aren't you glad that when we miss the mark, God forgives us, sets our feet back on the right path, and allows us another chance. Yes, yes. Moses got one chance. Yes. And he smote a rock and missed his blessing. Yes. So what does it mean to be lenders and not borrowers? Yes. And to be the head and, and not the tail? Yes. What, what, does it, what does it mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Proverbs 22 and 7 states, the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. You see, God promised Israel that if they obeyed him and lived according to his word, you see, they would always, watch this, have enough so that they would be givers to the needy rather than being the needy receiving from the givers. Y'all just totally missed that. <laughs> amen, amen. You, you see, what he's saying is when he said, I'm making, I've made you the lender instead of the borrower, God is saying, I'm going to always make sure that you have more than what you need so that people will come to you rather than you going to them. 
Now, now I, got, I must tell you this. I must tell you this. You have to be careful of the folk that you let bless you. Can I get a witness? Uh, because some folk are trying to buy you. You see, everybody that's saying the Lord told me to give you this, uh, amen, they don't have good intention. Uh, amen, they're trying to buy you. Uh, amen, when God said that he wants us to be the lenders rather than the borrowers, God is saying that he wants us to not be obligated to anybody but himself. Now, you have to remember, they were getting ready to go into the land of promise. They were getting ready to live in houses that they didn't build, drink from wells that they didn't dig, eat from vineyards that they didn't plant. So God is already giving them everything that they need. But staying there, hinged upon their obedience. The Lord said to them in verse 12, he said, I will open up unto thee his good treasures, the heaven, out of heaven. He said to give thee rain unto thy land in his season. He said, even though you're going to start out with, 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 with vineyards that you did not plant, the Lord said, as long as you are obedient, the heavens will continue to open. The rain will continue to come down. And, the rain, and I will bless the work of thine hand. And he said, when I bless what you have, he said, you will be lenders and not borrowers. You see, those who are needy become obligated to the giver. Amen. If you don't believe it, why are you still paying that bill every month? Amen. You know, every month, amen, you're still paying that note because you are obligated to the giver. You see, but God's plan for us is that we not be in debt. Can I get a witness? Amen. Because we are hooked up with the debtor. Amen. Because we borrowed from them. But we have to understand God's plan is that we be lenders and not borrowers. Amen. Y'all don't have to get quiet on me. Amen. All of us have missed the mark. Amen. When it comes to this, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God when it comes to this. Remember, all I'm doing is telling us God's plan. Amen. His plan was that we be lenders and not borrowers. Amen. God wants people coming to us rather than us going to them. And the reason God wants them coming to Christians because as Christians, we're not trying to buy anybody. Amen. But we're trying to help somebody. Can I get a witness? You see, one thing I've learned about God is that God knows how to take care of his children. If you don't believe it, ask Elisha. Amen. That's Elijah because God can take care of you even in the midst of a three-year drought. Can I get a witness? Amen. Every day Elijah ate. Amen. At the house of the widow. Amen. Because God kept his word. You see, Elijah didn't have to borrow from nobody. Amen. But because the widow woman obeyed what he said, God provided for him, her, and her son during a three-year drought. And we have to understand this one thing. God don't have to fill up your meal barrel in order to take care of you. The only thing he has to do is make sure every time you go back that there's some meal in the barrel. You see, we've got that wrong. We, we, we've got it wrong. We try to preach it and say, God filled up the meal barrel. Go back and read the scripture. That's not what it said. It just simply said every time she went back. Whenever she dipped a cup down in there, there was meal in the barrel. Every time she picked up the jar to pour out some oil, that was all in. Yeah. 
Elijah didn't have to borrow and beg from nobody. But when we obey God, God will see to it that we are taken care of. God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we find his will in his word. He said to Israel that I have made you lenders and not borrowers. Now God can make us something, but it's up to us to stay what he's made us. Amen. That means we have to keep our lives pure if we are going to remain what God has made us. Well, let me, let me move on. And then in verse number 13, somebody speeded up the clock. Verse number 13 says, and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Now, I like that. You know the tail is the last thing you see. And God said, I have not made you the tail. He said, I shall make thee the head and the tail. Let me tell you what, what, what this, this proverb means when it says the head and the tail. It means being the leader rather than the follower. Can I get a witness? You see, you see the church should be the head not the world. But can I tell you something? Right now the church is following the world rather than the world following the church. It's because we've allowed them to switch roles with us because we're so busy trying to become like them rather than getting them to become like us. You see, when you are the head and, and not the tail, it, it means you possessing great and independent power independent from the world. Yes, sir. And that means that, that they didn't need to team up with nobody. Yes, Can I tell you something? When you are the head and not the tail, you don't need nobody to help you fight your battle. Yes, what God is telling Israel when he said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. If you go back and read Israel's history once they get over into the promised land, yes, you will find out that every time folk came against them, not just one person came, but they would always gang up on them. They would get somebody to team up with them to come against Israel. But if you ever go back and read their history, every time they fought, God didn't use nobody else. God used the Israelites because it was not the Israelites that was fighting, but it was God. You see folk in church, when they're trying to fight you, have you ever noticed they don't come by themselves? Have you ever noticed they got to go and get somebody here? Amen. They're never going to tell you the truth. Amen. They're going to always put their own little twist on it. Amen. And, and, and especially if they've been buying you. Remember I said you have to be careful who you let bless you. Who you let when, when, when you can't pay your car note, you better be careful who you let pay your car note. Amen. Amen. Because I can't say that. Folk have a way. Amen, reminding you what they've done for you. But I'm glad that God don't waste his time reminding me of what he's done for me. The fact that I get up every morning, it reminds me that God's already blessed me. It reminds me of how blessed I am. God don't ever tell us remember when because we ought to remember when without God having to say anything to us. I don't care where you are in your life. You didn't get there by yourself. Hey, Amen. It was God that was. Well, I got to share a couple of more things with you. And then I'll get out of this. I'll get out of this. Their blessings were, their blessings were tied to 
obedience. We're talking about the will of God is found in his word. His, his plan is in his word. So his word had told them what they needed to do. Shortly after Moses writes the book of Deuteronomy, he goes off the scene. But his words are left there with the Israelites. And Joshua is raised up as their new leader. And God takes them across the Jordan River. And on that day, he elevated Joshua in the eyes of the Israelites. You see, they knew about Moses and the Red Sea. But God said, I'm going to show you something even different. Uh, because he didn't bring them to Jordan when it was low. He didn't bring them when it was dry. But if you go back and read the first chapters of Joshua, God brought them there when it overflowed its banks. Uh, that means it was filled up and it was running over. But as soon as the priest's feet touch the water. The Bible says the water rolled back like a scroll. And they were able to walk across on dry land. I'm talking about being the head and not the tail. You see, you see, if, if we obey God, God will show his power through us so that somebody else can see who he is. They crossed the Jordan River got on the other side. When they were finished, yeah. Scripture says the waters came back together again and, and overflowed their banks. But let me tell you what happened. Their first test was Jericho, a place called Jericho. Now, God's already told them, I've made you the head and, and not the tail. He, he said, you are already the, the lender and not the borrower. He said, but in order for you to stay there, he said, you've got to obey me. So now God has a habit of giving us some instruction that just don't make sense. Anybody been there before? Amen. Well, well, I've been there before. I know y'all are holy. And when everything God tells y'all to do, you get right to doing it. I know y'all do that, but I, I'm happy to be honest. I don't do that. Amen. Now, sometimes I have to sit and look and say, now, 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 now Lord, is this really you? Well, because what you're telling me don't make no sense. Now, Lord, we can do this another way, and it'll be a lot easier. And really what I'm saying, it would be easier on me. And, and God is saying, I'm not about making it easier on you. I'm about showing who I am. Well, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me tell you the instructions that God gave to Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, he said, now, what I want you to do is I want you to gather up your army. Hey Amen. Now this is going to go a little longer than 930 if you can't tell. Hey Amen. We're already past that, I believe. So it's going to take me just a few more minutes. Can I finish it? Hey Amen. The Lord said to Joshua, he said to him, he said, now you go to Jericho. And he said, what I want you to do is just march around one time. But I need to back up and tell you something. You see, folk are scared of God. Because Jericho, the scripture said, was straightly shut up. Nobody was coming out and nobody was going in. Do you know the reason why? Because they had heard about the Israelites. And they knew the Israelites served a powerful God. Any God that can cause you to cross the Jordan River when the banks are overflowing, you can walk across on dry land. He deserves our attention. Well, nobody was going in and nobody was coming out. And the Lord said to Joshua, he said, now you go you march around the city one time. No talking. No singing. No nothing. March around the city, and then you go back home. And I can imagine Joshua saying, now, you want us to do what? That makes no sense. Do you know what? Because it didn't make sense to Joshua, God didn't change what he said. 
He said, march around the city one time. Come back home. Get up early the next morning and do the same thing. Get up early the next morning and do the same. Do it for six days. And then he said, on the seventh day, march around the city seven times. But don't say nothing. March around the city seven times. Now, now, now the problem was, was the wall. You see, see, Jericho thought they were saved because they were behind a 12-foot wide wall, a 12-foot high wall, so they thought they were secure. But, but let me tell you what, what, what brought the wall down. It, it was not a bomb that brought it down. Oh, y'all don't hear me. It, it was not a bomb that brought it down. It was not Donald Trump pushing a button But, but, but can I tell you what brought it down? It was a shout of his people that brought down the wall. Oh, I think y'all missed what I just said. You see, when, when, when you're standing looking at trouble, you see, sometimes you just have to shout. Can I get a witness? Let me tell you what I'm saying when I say shout. You've got to start praising God. You see, the wall is still there, but you ought to praise him. And in the midst of your praise, okay. Let me tell you what happened. You see, here God is showing Israel how when you obey me, I will bless you. I've already told you in my word who you are. And I've told you, in order to remain there, you must obey me. So he uses Jericho, a fortified city, to show them who he really is. Now remember, these are those who was 20 years and younger. They didn't really know about a whole lot about what God had done. So God was going to prove to them who he is and what he's able to do. So the wall comes tumbling down. But God had given some instruction. He said, when you go into the city, he said, kill and destroy everything in there. But let me tell you something, there's always an Achan in the camp. There was a fellow by the name of Achan. There's going to be always somebody in the church who... Who ain't on board with the program. Amen. So, 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 so Achan saw this garment. And you see, we have to understand when God speaks a word, I don't care how small your disobedience is, in the eyes of God, it's disobedient. And, and, and when you have an Achan in the church, the whole church will suffer behind Achan. Let me tell you what I'm talking about now. Now, now they, they reaped the blessing of obedience at Jericho. But just a few days later, as they were marching forward into the promised land, there was a little old city called Ai. Ai. A two-letter city. And Joshua sinned, talking about the disobedience part now, Joshua sinned spies to Ai, and they came back and said, listen, you don't need to take the whole army. Two or three thousand would be enough to take care of AI. So Joshua prayed about it, and sure enough, he sent out 3,000 men. But because there was disobedience in the camp, because Achan had messed up, Israel went out thinking that we got this. We shouted and the walls came down. Surely all we've got to do is just send a few folks to take care of AI. It's no bigger than his name, just two letters, AI. But let me tell you something, AI will whip you when sin is in your life. When there's sin in the camp, AI will whip you. Well, that's exactly what happened. They went against Ai, and those men of Ai, a small city, sent 3,000 Israelites running 
back to camp. Joshua started crying out, now, Lord, what is it that I have done? Lord, what, what happened? What happened? You know, we, you did that at Jericho. Now, now, what's wrong? And the Lord said, there's sin in the camp. The reason I share these two examples with you, I can't finish that. The reason I share these two examples with you is God had given in this 28th chapter blessings and curses. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. I'm going to go ahead and finish. Y'all sit down. I'm going to go ahead and finish. I ain't going no further. I'm going to go ahead and finish. I'm going to bring it to a close. God had given blessings and he had given curses. He said, if you do this, what Moses has written out here, the Lord said, I'll bless you. He said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. He said, I'll make you the lender and not the borrower. He said, but when you disobey me, things are going to flip. Instead of you being the head, you'll end up being the tail. Instead of you being the lender, you'll end up being the borrower. Well, they got a good taste of what God was saying. All because of one man. The only thing I can say this morning, I started to look around, but I'm not going to do that. I sure hope we don't have an A-can in the camp. But let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened as I close. When they got back on the obedience track, they went back out, and this time they were able to defeat Ai. But God had to teach them a lesson. And his lesson was that there are consequences when you disobey me. But the thing that I want to share with you this morning, those were immediate consequences that happened. Today, I thank God for grace and mercy. I thank God for grace and mercy. How many of us would be here today if grace and mercy had not stepped in on our behalf? How many of us would be here today if God was still allowing things to happen just like he did in Joshua's day when they sinned, immediate consequences showed up. Sometimes the consequences lasted for 70 years. Oh, Lord. I'm not even 70 years old. And I can only imagine having to deal with your sin for 70 years. I thank God this morning for grace and mercy. Let me tell you the point of the sermon. Let me tell you the point of the sermon. For those of you, for somebody who's asking the question, what is God's will for my life? What is it that God wants me to do? I have the answer for you. Read the book. Read the owner's manual. And when you read the owner's manual, then obey what the owner's manual says. It's not about whether you agree with it. It's not whether you like it, but it is the word of God. And let me tell you something, start obeying his word and watch things start to change in your life. Watch you go from being the borrower to the lender. Watch you go from being the tail to the head. Instead of folk leading you around on your job, you'll be the one that's leading them around. Why? Because you are obeying the word of God. That's the reason why some folk can't understand why you have what you have, why you are where you are. It's because you are the head. Go ahead and read your Bible on your break. Go ahead and read your Bible on your lunch hour. Don't worry about what folk are talking and saying behind your back because all you're doing is learning what God wants you to do. And when you put it into practice, you will find God showing you other things as you're walking down this Christian journey. May God bless you and may God keep you. His will is found in his word.
Our deacons are coming, they're standing, our ministers are standing as we extend an invitation to you this morning. We never assume that everybody who's sitting in the sanctuary is saved. We never assume that everybody knows Jesus in the pardon of their sin. So just in case there is one here who don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, this invitation is extended to you when you come. We would love to introduce you to the one who hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cross for your sins and for mine. But Barrett stayed in the grave for three days, but I thank God that he didn't stay there. On that third day, he rose with all power, both in heaven and in earth, in his hand. Secondly, if you're here a candidate for baptism, we invite you to come. Thirdly, if you're here without a church home, and the Holy Spirit has been moving up on your heart saying this is the place that you need to be. We invite you to come. While the choir sings, we're standing. If there be another, will you come?
the place there for you to make that decision. Also. But most of all, thank you for joining us today. We are live streaming as we worship our God in spirit and in truth. May God bless you and keep you, and may you have a blessed day. Pastor Trotter, members of friendship, we have one of our own coming down, little sister Jalen Rose Johnson. She's seven years old, and she's a candidate for baptism. We also have one of our own, Brother Philip Jones. And Brother Jones is coming down with a praise report. He came down and said, praise. 